Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Do I Have Time For This? The series that looks at old and new video games, from indie to AAA and everything in between, to help you figure out if you've got the time to play, finish, 100% complete a game, or to just leave it in your backlog to forever gather dust. Today we're looking at a game that many, myself included, were extremely skeptical of, Bluba Team's remake of Silent Hill 2. Given Bluba Team had a history of struggling to get across serious subject matter in games such as in the medium, and the recently released Silent Hill projects The Transmission and Ascension, Silent Hill 2 seemed destined for an average rating at best. I'm happy to say however, that in a rare case for Konami, Bluba Team has managed to do the original source material justice, bringing an incredible upgrade to the graphics alongside a reliable set of gameplay mechanics that work as a perfect introduction to the series for a modern audience. I personally was a latecomer to the Silent Hill franchise, not starting until Silent Hill 4, but watched my older brother play 1 and 3. This meant that aside from YouTube videos discussing the story, I knew absolutely nothing about this game going in. No set pieces, bosses or cutscenes, only the main gist of the story. As a result, I'm going to keep the video as spoiler light as possible for anyone new to the game, but safe to say this was a fantastic time through and through. Silent Hill 2 has you play as reluctant protagonist James Sunderland, who is drawn back to the infamous town Silent Hill by a letter from his dead wife. Not long after he arrives, he meets oddball characters, horrific monsters, and baffling town design decisions, but he'll stop at nothing to get Mary back. Before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video, and let's see what mind games Silent Hill 2 Remake can play with us. Following a brief and atmospheric walk through the woods to the town proper, we finally reach Silent Hill. At first you may feel like the story is very hands off, but once you get through the first proper puzzle in the open environment and reach the apartments, I promise you it will start to kick in. This game being known for its incredibly subtle and twisting story, focusing on trauma and psychological horror, this was the main thing Bluba Team had to nail, and they definitely pulled it off. There's a huge variety of storytelling devices at play here, from the subtle clues like James's wedding ring tan line, to the posters around the town always referencing memories, it's a lot of things for diehard fans to notice without giving too much away to the newcomers. As I said before, James is looking for his wife who had been dead for three years, following a letter he received, seemingly from beyond the grave. Whilst we don't get the whole picture until the conclusion of the game, each NPC not only offers an insight into James as a character, but they also help make Silent Hill feel actually lived in, rather than the long abandoned town the empty streets would make it seem. The emotional themes of grief and guilt are not only realised here, but maturely explored. Voice acting is also spot on, with James being a specific highlight, but even the NPCs you meet talk as if they're in a daze, or have been hit with some sort of bear tranquilizer. You're crazy, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. I like you, but you're crazy. Whilst you may think I'm saying this as a negative, I think it lends itself perfectly to the dreamlike setting of Silent Hill, where nothing is really right and you can't trust anything people say. You can tell the facial animations also had a significant amount of work on them since they were criticised following the initial trailer. Now we've discussed the story, how does it actually play? Well, the game easily falls into two parts, combat and puzzles. What's even better is, as part of the huge suite of accessibility options available, you can choose a difficulty for both puzzles and combat at the start of the game. This is similar to the previous games in the franchise, and options like this are always loaded over here, as we need more games with these features. As per the standard for any of my reviews, I stuck with the standard or middle option for both difficulties, 
as it's what most people will end up choosing. Puzzles, save for a few awkward moments where I forgot how combination locks worked, were on the whole fairly straightforward. As is the standard for survival horror with puzzles, the large majority is finding which item X to go get item Y, with some genuine thought puzzles thrown in between. I honestly feel as though you could have stepped it up to the hard difficulty with the puzzles, but once you choose the difficulty, you're locked in for the full game. Combat is where the major overhaul to the game really took place. With the fixed camera angles gone, Silent Hill 2 Remake introduces combat very similar to the Resident Evil 3 Remake from Capcom, with an over-the-shoulder shooting mechanic and a very simple dodge button. The shooting is just fine, bullets feel like they make an impact and actually slow down enemies, but guns are more of an urgent backup option. The majority of the combat is actually melee focused, as in the original, where you're wielding whatever James can come across as a makeshift weapon. And this is where the combat can be very hit or miss. The best way to describe the melee combat is that it's snappy. If you've played The Last of Us, you'll know what I mean. When you hit the melee button, you'll often slide a couple of feet across the floor and snap in a place you can hit the enemy in question, which works the majority of the time. Whilst this is definitely not as refined as you'd find in a Naughty Dog title, it's definitely not just windmilling in the air and hoping to hit something. Okay, but on my way, I'm gonna be doing this. If you get hit, it's your own fault. Okay, then I'm gonna start kicking air like this. Uh, and if any part of you should fill that air, uh, it's your own fault. It essentially boils down to combat a bit like Callisto Protocol, where you make a few hits, dodge, then make a few more hits, only nowhere near as rigid and restrictive. Once you figure out the patterns for an enemy type, you essentially unlock easy mode, and will rapidly build up ammo and healing items as you become untouchable save for multiple enemy encounters. Overall though, it does feel punchy, visceral and gross, and you can really feel the anger behind James as he curb stomps an abomination into the floor. Speaking of these abominations, how do they measure up to the originals? Well, they are just as gross, wet and messed up as they used to be, but now you can, for the most part, tell what they actually are. Like with the original, the inspiration and theme of the enemies is the same, which I'll not spoil, but they are fantastic. The way they move and attack are very grounded too, with some of the out of place animations shown in the previous trailers now gone. There's not a massive amount of variety in the enemies, which I think was a limitation of the time back in 2001, but there's still plenty here to keep you on your toes. Environments are equally as wet and gross as the enemies, with the dilapidated Silent Hill having a strangely large number of suspect holes for James to put his arm in. The town is almost like a character itself, ever-changing with broken doors opening themselves, impossible passages in architecture with huge, inexplicable fissures blocking your way. For those who are new to the franchise, there are actually two sides to Silent Hill, the quote-unquote real world where everything looks normal, and the other world that looks like a hellscape. Now I'll not show too much of it so as not to spoil too much, but this hellish design perfectly encapsulates my idea of hell. Not only is everything a bizarro version of the world, but the enemy encounters are increased. Oftentimes they'll wait in ambush for you, and are far more aggressive to get across just how dangerous this plane of existence is. The walls peel away like melted flesh to show rusty iron frames, cloth becomes like a plastic sheet, and barbed wire is everywhere. Yes, the visuals are great here, really making the most of current hardware, but I just wanted to quickly shout out the death of our beloved Comic Sans sign. It is available to see out of bounds, but isn't in the game proper. The music is very true to the original, evoking the old soundtrack whilst giving us something new to listen to, like they'd sampled the previous one to iterate into something more modern. It greatly adds to the dreamlike state of the world, and improves the atmosphere for sure. The sound design itself is also really immersive, the crackly radio when you're near enemies, the fleshy squelching of a monster coming your way, the fact you can hear James's breath quivering as he rounds a corner or opens a door is such great attention to detail. If you listen closely, you can also hear hints at the true nature of the story, with a woman's breath or voice as you go along a corridor, or a ventilator as you walk through an abandoned hospital. The last thing I'll mention here is the map. Like with the original, the map is your lord and saviour in the Silent Hill 2 remake. You'll find one at the beginning of every section, then as you go, you'll see James mark down locked doors, blocked passages, and points of interest such as puzzle locations or clues. Honestly, without this, I'd be lost a thousand times over, and I'd still be playing now. 
It's such a diegetic way to have a note of all this information, and such an immersive addition to the game. Bloober team definitely don't get credit for this, it was all team silent, but still, for the newcomers, you will need this. So let's get down to it. How long does this game take? I went down every street I could, searched every house and room, and I completed my first playthrough at around 15 hours. If you just run around from place to place, avoiding combat or optional areas, you can complete Silent Hill 2 Remake in about 12 hours. Given there are specific achievements for finishing the game fast and on New Game Plus, a full completionist run through, if you don't follow a guide the first time around, will be about 20 hours. With frequent save points, shortcuts to backtrack and the option to pause cutscenes, this game definitely respects your time as a player. With the well-paced story, you'll never feel like you're missing too much on a shorter play session, so this is perfect for people who only have a small amount of time to work with. My personal recommendation to avoid being lost in puzzles would be to complete an area per gameplay session, but if you can't do that, the previously mentioned map mechanics will be able to guide you on where to go and what you have left to do. Coming in at the price of a standard modern game, I feel like this game is enough value for money if you're willing to go the extra mile for completion. If you're just looking to play through the story once and then you're done, you may feel differently. For the hardcore horror lovers, completionists or fans of the original, I'd say this was definitely worth it, but for the casual player who has heard of this game on the grapevine, there's definitely a great story and solid set of gameplay mechanics here, but it may be worth waiting on a slight sale with how packed the last few months have been for game releases. I fully recommend Bloober Team's take on Silent Hill 2. Having not played the original, I can't say what has changed and what hasn't, but this incredible level of detail, combat overhaul, and accessibility suite shows there was a lot of passion when creating this remake. I can't give full marks as the best things about the game, the setting, atmosphere, story, and characters are all part of what Team Silent created all those years ago, but Bloober has definitely brought a solid remake to the current audience. A little bit of research shows some boss encounters and gameplay segments were changed in terms of how they play out, aping a lot of Resident Evil 2 Remake, but nowadays there are a lot of Silent Hill features I definitely wouldn't bring back like the escalator part of Silent Hill 4, so I understand their choices. Like you could, G. My only real negative if I had to give one was some framerate issues in the opening, but with PC games it's hard to find the perfect storm for each bespoke setup. That being said, as time went on, these issues went away, and for a PC port in 2024, it's actually pretty good. My question is what happens now? With Bloober Team's reputation somewhat saved, Konami finally leasing out its IP to experienced and passionate developers, I'm interested to see what games like Silent Hill F bring. I really hope they don't do a Capcom and remake all the games in the series, but if they leave Bloober at the helm, I'm confident they can do them justice. A fantastic step forward in a franchise long known for its flops, Silent Hill 2 Remake shows that single player horror experiences with true passion behind them, can flourish in the modern day gaming landscape. Do you think you have time for Silent Hill 2 Remake? On this channel I like to give my thoughts on the game, alongside a bit more of a deep dive on the time you have to invest, so you know what you're getting into, because time is precious, right? If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, feel free to like and share. If you subscribe, I'm looking to put out regular content like this, alongside some more in-depth video essays and freeform videos, so stick around, and if you have any requests on future videos, just drop them in the comments. And finally, if you want to come chat with me, you can find me over on x.com slash gracious underscore rhino. I'm Gracious Rhino, look after each other, and I'll catch you soon.